I started doing the TypeScript challenges in this repository. And while working through one of the problems, I noticed a lot of confusion around a seemingly simple thing, uh, which is unions and intersections in TypeScript. And yeah, I really went down the rabbit hole looking for answers. So in this video, I'm going to set the record straight on unions and intersections in TypeScript and try to clear up any confusion because I certainly was pretty confused. So what exactly is the confusion? First, the term union and intersection is taken straight out of set theory when it comes to TypeScript, right? Wrong. Let's take a look at the docs. Here we go. We can read right here in the fine print. It might be confusing that a union of types appears to have the intersection of those types properties. This is not an accident. The name union comes from type theory. Hmm. Right. So what is type theory? I, I, I don't know. Uh, like anyone, anyone who is obsessed with researching these types of weird esoteric things. I went to Wikipedia and this is what I found. Yeah, so type theory is the formal presentation of a specific type system. <laughs> okay, that's not super helpful, but uh, this is interesting. It's uh, some type theories serve as alternatives to set theory. Type theory is still based on set theory, but there are a couple differences, uh, which if we come down here, here we go. So differences from set theory. There's a bunch of them here, and honestly, like I didn't understand pretty much uh, any of them, but there was a really interesting part right here where it says where a union would be used, type theory uses the sum type. Right, so it's saying that uh, instead of using the type of union that we'd be used to in set theory, it uses this other thing called the sum type. What is the sum type? Well, let's go up here. The sum type is a tagged union. So what is a tagged union? Glad you asked. So in computer science, a tagged union is a data structure used to hold a value that could take on several different but fixed types. Hmm. Okay, so this tagged union thing sounds very, very similar to unions and TypeScript. In fact, from what I can tell, they do have the exact same behavior. Uh, another interesting thing to take note of here is that the sum type, remember, a sum type is really just a union in type theory, is used for logical or and or union. So there's confusion where I've seen a lot of people say that the, the pipe or the or symbol acts more like an intersection and the ampersand acts more like a union in TypeScript, which according to what we're looking at here is not true. So now let's also go up here to bring up intersections and intersections, uh, they're like ignored. I don't know, but if I uh, look up intersection here, it appears once on the entire page. And funnily enough, if I search for intersection in the TypeScript docs where it talks about unions, it only appears three times. <laughs> like there's not a lot of stuff on intersections, but that didn't stop me. Back to Wikipedia. So this part is the important piece. It says, uh, besides ordered pairs, this type is used for the logical operator and because it holds A and, well, B kind of. Yeah, okay, I think you get the point. Goes on to say it is also used for intersection because it holds one of both types. Okay, so we have that in type theory, we have the logical operator and, and we have the sum type or union, which is represented as the logical or in TypeScript but there's still confusion. So to put this in other words, if a tagged union, which is used for a logical or, is still fundamentally a union, and a product type, which is used for a logical and, is still fundamentally an intersection, then yeah, where's the problem? Well, let's look at some code. Okay, so I'm just going to make two very simple types here. I'm going to say type A is equal to a and type B is equal to B. Now let's create a new type that is the union of these two types. I'm gonna say type AB equals A or B. Okay, so, so far, so good, right? Now I'm gonna, let's say, it, say a const A, which is of type A equals A. We can do that. Uh, I can't make that B because B is not assignable to type A as it says here in this, this error. Now let's do the same thing for B. Awesome. Now let's say const uh, AB is of type a, B, and that equals A. We can do that because type AB can be 
either A or B, right? And I can also change that to B and we're still good. So now I'm gonna make some functions. I'm gonna declare function get AB and it's gonna return a value that is of type AB. And if you don't know what this declare thing is, that's just saying that I'm telling TypeScript that, hey, this function exists, it's called get AB and it has this return type but I don't actually have to implement it. Anyways, so I'm gonna make two more of these functions. Uh, we'll say uh, just a, it won't return anything, but it will accept um, a, an argument of type A. I'm gonna do the same thing, but for B. So I'm gonna comment that out and come down here and I'm gonna say const AB equals get AB. So AB is of type AB, which means that AB is either A or B, the value A or B, right? However, what happens when I pass that into one of these functions? We'll just say uh, just A, pass an AB, and I get an error saying argument of type AB is not assignable to parameter of type A, type B is not assignable to type A. Like, what does this mean? <laughs> I thought that type A could have been either or, so why is this not working? And the same thing happens when I try to pass a b into the function just b and this is where i think the confusion does happen because you look at these errors right here and you you think okay what do you think let's change this to instead of being the union of a type a and type b let's change it to the intersection of type a and b and all of our errors go away. So yeah, this is where the confusion happens because it appears to be that when we use the intersection of type A and B, that the new type AB looks more like the union of A and B. But when we do the union, it looks more like it's the intersection. So to figure out what's going on here, let's go back to the docs, the, the TypeScript docs, and reread that little quote that we saw. So coming back to this, it says that it may be confusing that a union appears to have the intersection of those types properties. And the rest of this part is kind of confusing. This part makes a lot of sense, but I'm going to try to reword it. So even though it appears like a union is acting more like an intersection, a union is still a union, but TypeScript will act like it only knows about the properties that are shared, i.e. the intersection in the union. And this introduces a concept that I've come to distinguish in my own head as user land and type land. So to demonstrate what I mean by that, let's look at some more code. So here I've created a cat interface and a dog interface. They both have an eat method and the cat has a meow method and dog has a bark method. Then here I created a new type called pet, which is the union of cat and dog. And here I just say that I have a function called pet that returns a value that is of type pet. So now if I say const pet equals adopt pet, then we know that uh, the variable pet is of type pet. And I can say pet.eat, but I cannot say pet.meow and I cannot say pet.bark. So once again, this appears that pet looks more like the intersection of cat and dog, which if we look at a set in like actual set theory, let's say that I have this set A and I have this set B, then the union of A and B is going to be a set comprised of all of the elements that are in both set A and set B. And if I take the intersection of A and B, then I will get a set that is comprised of elements that only belong to set A and B. If we come back down here, it's kind of exactly what we're seeing right here. We see that I have this type uh, cat, which has eat and dog that has eat. And down here I have pet, which is um, type pet, which is supposedly the union of cat and dog. It only has the eat method and it does not have access to the meow or bark method, but this isn't really true. And yeah, we're getting closer to why this is so confusing because even though TypeScript right here is telling me that I can't call the meow method on pet, that's not entirely true. So going back to this example, uh, let's look at like, why did this not work? Why are we getting an error here? And this is 
going back to that thing I said where there's a difference between what happens in, in user land and type land. So when we see a type like AB, I think we're used to reading this as AB equals A or B. However, I think that is the wrong mental model to take. The, the correct way to look at this is that the type AB is both A and B simultaneously. And that's because AB is a type, it's a set. It's like going back to here and saying that this set A is can only be one of its members. Like that makes no sense. It's a set. It just represents a collection of things. It isn't a thing in and of itself. Okay, so that's great. I think we've established that type pet is not a cat or a dog. It's both a cat and a dog at the same time. And that's because once again, here, pet is a set, the set of values. However, when we go to the TypeScript side, we enter, I guess, this, this user land where just like I can't have a value that is both A and B, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you can't have a value that is two separate values at the same time. And TypeScript knows this, and so it forces you to narrow down on the type. So down here, TypeScript isn't yelling at us because pet can't be a cat and it doesn't have the meow method. It's yelling at us because it doesn't know if pet is a cat or it's a dog at this point. And so we have to narrow the type. And we can do that with uh, a guard function. So we'll say uh, const is cat equals pet, which is of type pet. And then we can say, pet is cat and this is an assertion that we're making that the value pet is a cat and this function needs to return a true or false and if it's true then that means that the assertion is correct that pet is actually a cat which is a subtype of pet i'm just going to say return meow in pet this is saying that if there's a property meow in pet then pet must be a cat so I can come down here and say, if is cat, pass in pet, then pet.meow. And TypeScript likes that. TypeScript is happy. I also say else pet.bark. And it also allows us to do this, even though we didn't explicitly check that uh, in, in this uh, if else branch that pet is a dog it can typescript can deduce that it is a dog because it's not a cat of course i had a syntax error there but it all it all checks out so at this point what if we change this union to an intersection if we do that then suddenly we have more problems uh well let's come down here and say pet dot Meow. So uh, IntelliSense is saying that I have access to meow here and pet dot bark right here. Right. So this is looking like a union where I have taken cat and dog and created a new type that looks like the union of its subtypes. And this is kind of true, but it doesn't negate what is actually happening under the hood. So notice here that I have some red and it's saying that, um, yeah, the types, the type predicates type must be assignable to its parameters type and type cat is not assignable to type pet. Well, that doesn't make sense. Uh, how is cat not assignable to type pet when cat is part of the pet type? And that's because when I took the intersection of cat and dog, I created a new type that is a more restrictive type than the original subtypes. Let me try to put it a different way. Coming back down here, notice that when I took the union of A and B, it created a new set that is larger than its original subsets. And same is also true. When I took the intersection of A and B, I created a new set that is a smaller, more restrictive set than the original sets A and B. And that is exactly what is happening right here. And this is also kind of another big light bulb moment for me is that there's this inverse relationship between the number of properties of an interface and the size of its set. The larger the interface, 
the smaller the set. And uh, the inverse is true, the smaller the interface, the larger the set. So coming back to, to pet, when I took the union of cat and dog, I actually created a, a new type or a new set that is a broader type than its original subsets. And that's why it's possible for me to do something like this. That's why it's possible for me to do something like this. Where I create a cat dog that can eat and it can meow and it can bark because the type pet is a broader type than just cat and dog alone. And you might go, well, yeah, but if you change this to an intersection, then that's also true. And you'd be right. However, this cat dog is now more restricted. And let me show you how. If I take away meow, then I can't do that. Same if I take away bark, I also cannot do that. And so you can see that with when I take an intersection, the shape of this object, cat dog, is more restrictive than if it were a union because it must have eat, meow, and bark. But if it's a union, then, then there are more types available that cat dog could be where I could remove the meow method or I could remove the bark method or I could have both of those methods. So basically what I've gotten out of all of this is that TypeScript is a dumpster fire and we're all going to die.